Chester. yesterday that I believe that every generation needs its version of Degrassi. Um, it's one of those shows uh, that can appeal to multiple generations and it, it does have longevity. So, uh, you know, we love the fact that you guys love the show and I hope that us being here this weekend will suffice for now to give you just a little bit of that taste and, and a little bit of nostalgia. Anybody else? Okay, we're done. Oh, from Brooklyn. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, first, I wanted to just say thank you to all of you for being so warm and inviting and welcoming at the table. It made for a great fan Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after, so this is for all of you or any of you. After playing your character for so long in many varied storylines, did it help or change the way you thought of things in your own life? That's a very good question. I feel like Kathy wants it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always love talking in a microphone. But I am... Uh, <laughs> Ta-da! I, I feel like it definitely changed the way I thought about things. I mean, it definitely made me more aware of, um, of scrutiny from peers and how judgmental high schoolers can be. I feel like it's like the most judgmental time and Manny sort of, I mean, she brought like a lot of attention to me um, and the character kind of sexualized me and I got a lot of, um, I guess, backlash and I just sort of wanted to become an advocate later in life for, for just empowering women and I think that playing Manny really sort of moved those wheels. Mm. That's a good answer. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my favorite monologue coming out loud. Uh, so Craig, the character I played, was, didn't treat uh, women very well. 
I thought. Yeah. And I actually had a really hard time sometimes uh, playing the character because I, I would feel like really guilty because there was a huge part of the character was, was who I was. I was I associated it with myself. So I feel like after doing Degrassi and after you know the character Craig cheated and and uh, lied and did these things, I was very like I had a little bit of a complex with you know any girlfriend or I was just like. I respect you, I was just like very, like, kind of as kind as possible, and so I, I don't know, I feel like um, it certainly, you know, uh, raised my awareness for, um, for how uh, men treat women, and certainly like today, a very uh, hot button issue. Now he, now he just treats his, his male friends really bad. Yeah, I think my male friends really well. High school, for me, and I'm going to say for a lot of people, is a difficult time. Like, you don't quite know who you are. You're trying to figure it out. There's there's judgment. There's peers. There's cliques. There's all those things that you're navigating. And to do that while simultaneously playing some different person on TV, you know, I think almost Emma wasn't so much what had the impact on me kind of like changing my perceptions and decisions, but being like a young person going through that double life almost did kind of change me. And um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like I think if, if Cassie says she's an advocate for women, like I would like to be an advocate to like young women who are going through those difficult teenage years. Um, yeah, just to kind of like, you know, keep your chin up and, you know, things will change and, and, and get better, so. Um, there were just, I mean, you, you guys covered basically uh, the the key points, but there there were certain things like when you grow up on the show and you you started at such a young age, um, you you get to a point, or, I, or at least I did, where you it's not really an identity crisis. You know that you are um, you've reached level of fame and people know you for playing a certain character, which is something special, and you and you get you get accustomed to that, and then. There comes a point where uh, you talk to enough people about the show, and you're becoming like you're still growing as a person. You're like, well, but I'm also interested in this and in this, and people don't really care about that. They just want to talk about the show. So then you almost resent the show a little bit. But then when people don't ask you about the show, it feels <laughs> weird. I have felt like I'm not even lying. I kind of like after I wrapped up on the show, I had a bit of like this rebellion phase, and I was like. Don't want to act. Don't want to audition. Don't want to be called Emma. Don't want to like have people thinking I'm all the things that Emma is. And yeah, so I took five years completely off, and I did all the things that interested me personally as Miriam, as opposed to as Emma, and got my real estate license, pursued other just like different things, just to kind of like break away from that pigeonhole thing. But like ironically, now I'm you know all excited about. Being with these guys and being called the so you know, full circle. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no escaping Degrassi. I mean, look at us. Yeah. We're here to say, here to say, yeah. proud ambassadors of the show. Um, for me, I wasn't always the confident, studly guy you see before you. Uh, you was. Uh, I was a very awkward, shy. I was 4'10 when what I started the series. <laughs> Before I every awkward and shy person uh, in grade nine, and then I got this part on this TV show, and I lived vicariously through the character of Joey Jeremiah, who I thought a cool guy would be, um, but in reality, I was just this guy putting on airs, pretending to be this, this character. And um, I think I walked away from the show feeling more confident about myself, feeling more comfortable in my own skin, um, and, and believing that I could be a better person. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think you guys also walked away from the series saying that to yourselves, that there is something to look forward to. There, there's a, always a, a brighter side to things, and you always have your friends and your family to support you. So, that's me. I disagree. No. <laughs> I think that I learned that Snake was a, um, a very you know, happy-go-lucky yeah. teenager. And by the time he was principal of Degrassi, he's a broken man. <laughs> and he rather, he rather, he's just looking for an excuse to get fired. And, uh, yeah, that's why I went to the show. <laughs>
That's a good question. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, I can't see you. Stand up. Yes, yes, you. Hi. Did you guys ever feel kind of shy when you kind of act on the scene that were topical issues? Some of you were very young, teenagers, or preteen maybe? Um, sorry, I was, uh, well, we were uh, actually talking about this yesterday in the panel. Um, some of us, uh, we were so young when we started that when there was a, a scene where someone had to kiss somebody else, it was actually their first kiss, like, in life was on camera. And that, that's enough of a, of a kind of window into our world where, like, we're trying to find ourselves as kids growing up, and then it, we're, in certain ways we get rushed to do something for the entertainment value or the educational value before we've even experienced it naturally. And I think own. in terms of topical issues, I mean, a lot of us, like, with how we were so young, um, like, my, um, I had an episode about abortion, and I was kind of shocked to know that it didn't air in the States for a long time, and it was kind of, it was a weird feeling for me to be that young and to know, like, that episode held so much power that it wasn't able to be aired in the States. So I feel like, I feel like it was a bit of a shock to me as a learning. So the, the day after the abortion episode aired, I came, came into school, my normal high school, and people were there throwing condoms at me. <laughs> and I was, so I was like, first day I was like, am I being bullied? I was like, this is weird. And then two, I was like, they think it's real. Like, they really like... So I was also amazed at the, at the power of the show and the power of that episode. Yeah, the, the writers did some cruel things to us a couple of times, I would say. But... I think there's something to be said about, we talked about this before, uh, the, the, I think the key to Degrassi is that if you cast age appropriate, those performances are going to be extremely awkward because those these are people that are actually thinking about or going through this at the, when they you know at the right time in their lives. They're not 21 years old playing 13, which they you know which it, it gives you different kind of performances and those shows are fun. But that's part of Degrassi is that feeling of going, oh my God, Manny's really going through this. You know, this is real for Emma, and that comes with them being around that age and the discomfort you feel, like watching Spike, who was 13 years old in, 19, in the 80s, you know, talking about being pregnant, where she never even kissed a boy, I think, at that point. But it's that's, that, that's the humility of the show, I think, you know? Good question. Yes, sir. So to this day, is Spinner still working at the dot? <laughs> <laughs> Spinner owns the job. Oh, my dad been school. Like he can manage his money because his wife handles all of it. Curious, how many folks came from out of town to be here this weekend? Like, wow! wow. Oh, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We we absolutely are humbled by that because we understand the costs involved and, and the dedication of you coming all this way just to see a bunch of kid actors from a TV show, and it means everything to us. I know I'm making jokes about it, but I mean it really does mean a lot to us, and we are so grateful to all of you and your loyalty to the show, all the different generations of it, and and thank you for making that journey, that pilgrimage, to just just to meet us for for a few moments, and, and thank you so much for that, guys. Yeah, when the, there's so many big stars in the building today and then uh, like I know I've talked to a whole bunch of you and the, oh yeah you got into town today uh, yesterday who else are you here to see oh no just you guys like, really you made a five-hour drive seven-hour drive just to see us yeah a round of applause for you guys yes. right? <laughs> tons of love as well yeah. <laughs> we love you locals. Uh, there's a young yeah Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, I think uh, I was kind of offbeat as a kid, and I didn't really fit in a lot with uh, my class, but I was really loud 
It was really loud and it was always making trouble. And my dad wanted to put me into something where he thought kids were loud. And <laughs> so he put me in improv classes. And I really, really enjoyed it. And it was creative and I made friends. And then from there, it just kind of became my love. And also, I was a big movie buff as, as a kid. And, and, um, and I, think, I, I think that's kind of how we all start. We see a performance that we really love or we really love an actor and that kind of inspires us. Yeah. Um, uh, my friends and I in third grade all found out we got to miss a day of school if we could audition for an art school. So we're like, we're auditioning for the art school, right? And, and I, of all of them, I got in somehow. It's this like crazy thing. And then my parents convinced me to go and it changed my life. I was, it was one of those amazing, lucky things and I just love the idea of playing make-believe and I love, and one of the reasons why I, I love being part of Degrassi is that I love doing any kind of work that has like something to say, like has a bit of a purpose, as well as being fun and entertaining or whatever. And so um, I, I really just uh, uh, got jazzed by that and wanted to keep doing it. Yeah, and for me, um, I danced when I was younger, and so it was kind of like a bit of an extension of that. My moves were dancing to musical theater. Um, and then it just kind of like I stumbled into it. I went to an open audition. Similar, probably, incentive. I was like, oh, that sounds kind of fun. Like, leave school, go into the city, do something different. Um, and yeah, I think I just really connected with like the escapism of it. Like you kind of get to leave your current reality and enter into a different one temporarily. And that was really fun. And it, it was like a really good feeling. And Degrassi was one of my very first jobs ever. And uh, it led me here. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was always a big fan of movies and TV shows, and uh, Jake and I were just talking about this today. For some reason, like, I could see a movie once and still quote scenes from it, like, 15 years later. Um, so it, it was always a big part of my life, and I, I come from, like, a, a very big Jewish family, and I, I had a bit of a personality. I was a little funny um, at a young age. So whenever we would go to a big family event, all the cousins would come over, ah, oh, you should be an actor, you should be an actor. <laughs> and I think uh, eventually I heard it one too many times. And I'm like, maybe I should. And uh, my parents were very supportive. Uh, they made me do all the, the groundwork, find an agent, take acting classes, and, uh, and I did. And um, an agency gave me a great opportunity, and Degrassi was my third ever audition. And it led here. Yeah, it's, um, I think we all really just fell into it. Um, you know, right place, right time. You know, there's some talented people out there that never get a chance, and we're just one of the few lucky ones that did get a break. And uh, I think anybody could be doing, could be sitting up here right now talking to you and talking to all the folks that are here. And um, I think if you love something, you just go for it, and you just don't give up. You keep trying and trying, and, and hopefully one day you do get that chance. <coughs> Um, I found out that you got a day off school if you auditioned for an art school. <laughs> and you invited me to do that, and then I got into school for the arts. I think Jake and I went to the same school for the arts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to the same school. Uh, just like 15, 20 years in between. We missed each other. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. But uh, yeah, and I, I think, you know, I think we were Somebody said, I think you're looking at a table full of weirdos. Like, I was I was writing little plays when I was in the fourth grade, and I think they pick up on that, and they go, you should audition for something that we don't offer in, in school. And it's like, I didn't want to go to school for the arts, and I really didn't like the idea of leaving my friends. But you get really caught up in uh, being creative. And I think that's sort of like, it becomes a, li you know, a little bit of a passion. And you can lose that passion, but, uh, I think everyone on the stage has sort of had that feeling at one point where it's just like you have to be sort of like outside of your body and create it that way, so. It's weird. Uh, okay. <laughs> Front row. This is for Cassie. Um, okay. First of all, you're great. I love you. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you're all wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Um, what was it like transitioning from uh, Degrassi to um, LA Complex after years of uh, Degrassi going? <laughs> you know, what a funny story is um, LA Complex was originally in touch as, as a spin off of Degrassi Goes Hollywood. And in the end, they decided to make it LA Complex for sort of a broader reach. 
and making it, making it a little older, a little sexier. And uh, I, guess, I guess my transition was, um, how, do I, how do I not be Manny just because I have been here for so long? How do I not, how do I not act a certain way? And um, I was so nervous that that nervousness became my character, Abby, and that was, that was how that transition okay. went. Just really organic nerves, anxiety. <laughs> that's how that's how it went. So they, so they called you up when you were on when you were on Degrassi to uh, to uh, get the part of. The, you know, uh, I, so we were in talks about it being a spinoff, and I was really excited. Maybe like a year or two went by, and then I realized they had changed it to Abby, and I had to re-audition for it. So I had to audition for it again, and. Uh, and I got it, so yay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but it was nice to to know that I had I had you know earned it. Yeah. Cool. Also, there was favor in my way. But no. <laughs> uh, yes, dear. First of all, she just said, "What are you doing?" Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I go to all kinds of comic cons, from you know like the private ones, like Supernatural, all the way down to going to Chicago, and um, I can't tell you how excited we were that you guys were oh, right. uh, She said, Craig, I said, spin it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, so, so no question? <laughs> oh, you're okay. oh, it was a comment. We did comment. Yeah. The young lady over here, yes. What are your guys' favorite Degrassi couple? Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Cranny. And uh, yeah, mine is crazy. I think I think it had like a lot of a lot of a lot of chemistry and a lot of uh, just a lot of great storylines. How about you guys? Uh, crazy as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely crazy. So, I mean, I, I would I would say like Joey Caitlin might go like old school original. Well, I have to pick my own character. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to be selfless for a second. I'm going to say, actually, Manny and Jay, uh, because I, I got to uh, I got to spend a lot of time with those characters, like because Spinner and Manny and Jay had a lot together, and uh, there was something about that chemistry and that back and forth. They were very very cute, and that those they were my favorite. Okay, it can be someone to sign for you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I always like to stir the pot and say it should have been Joey and Tessa. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I always say we were on a break since school's out. Everybody cruise me. I actually, like, because I love so many of the, the couples on the show, but I, I honestly, my favorite grassy couple is Eli and Claire. Um, it's, it's a different, that's a different era, but they are, there's so many amazing couples, but they, there's something about that couple that just always, like, breaks your heart or makes the, make you laugh, and, and they're never meant to be together, but they're meant to be together, so, there's, was that a good answer for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, gentleman over there, in the back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah. yeah. Uh, when Jonathan came in to direct a few episodes, uh, what was the biggest thing that you took away uh, from that uh, with him coming in as director? Well, he didn't direct, actually. He, he, we wanted him to direct a lot, but there was, it was a Canadian content factor that wouldn't allow him to. So he came in as a massive fan just to be on the show. And he's done it several times. So, uh, <laughs> but he has a real love and you know, for the for the show. Here's one. Yeah, I mean, he, he uh, it's, yeah, he did direct, but when the, the few scenes that I got to be in with him, he, he did sort of direct a little bit, he kind of was like, I'm going to try this, you, you kind of respond to me in this way, and this, like, he kind of, and I was such a massive Kevin Smith fan, so the whole thing was just crazy. You feel like crazy. sure, yeah. Yeah, I was like, whatever you want, I'll do whatever you want, I'll be Jay. But yeah, I mean, he, he's such an amazing storyteller. Yeah. So the, the, part, the coolest part about having him on set was if you could corner him and just get him to tell a story about something. 
Uh, he's just an unbelievable speaker. Uh, and, and can, if I can just say real quick, um, having Kevin as a fan of the show, I mean, really, I believe, helped validate us to the American market. Uh, he gave us exposure that we may not have ever had. And we know he has such loyal fans that if, if he must like the show, then, then maybe we're missing something. We should give it a chance. So we are very, very grateful for his support for all the years um, and all the good things he said about the show. He also said that he would only do uh, the grass goes all the way if I could direct. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to direct because of Kevin Smith, but I don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and, and he's such just a, just, like just a, such a, yeah, it's yeah, really such a nice thing that he did for you. And he was always like, right from the beginning, when we were, we were just uh, teenagers, like 16, 17, 18, when uh, he first showed up on set, and he was by far the biggest, uh, the biggest star to cameo uh, to date at that point. And, we, we walked in and we were all nervous and he like he came up to us and he already knew our names. Like I'll, I'll never forget when I went up to him. I, I know I just said he came up to us, but I went up to him and like, uh, hey man, uh, it's Shane, uh, my name's Shane, uh, it's really nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah, dude, I, I know who you are. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's something that will always stick with me. He was just, he's the anti-celebrity. If you so treat cool. him, it's just so genuine. Yeah, if you treat him like he's a big shot, he'll get weird. Like, yeah. He's just, he's a normal guy. Yeah. 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 And he seems to know everything, it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everything and everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You, you pick some. Uh, um, over here. Um, I just wanted to know what was the difference between the casting process for the original Degrassi and Next Generation? Oh, the difference? Yeah. Oh, like, well, it was different. You know, I mean, it was a way different time. It was, it was a time when there were no rules in a lot of ways, so I don't think you get away with casting this way anymore, but. Basically, I mean, I was, they came to my school for the arts looking for actors, and uh, uh, they were also putting out ads and papers. And I auditioned for Joey Jeremiah, because there were only two roles to audition for, I think it was Joey Jeremiah or Yip Yu. And uh, so, but they, after that, they put us in basically a workshop process where they put like 30 kids together at a time, and they just make us do improvs and and sort of like little scenes just to see who was, you know, just to see what your talents were. So I could tell right away that this Pat Mastriani was, they were just constantly getting him to play Joey Jeremiah. And I'm like, why can't I be Joey? Hey. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so I was really, I was really peeved, but it was like over a lot of several weeks where it, it, the process, they started weeding people out. You would get a letter at the end of the week saying, We'd like you to come back, or thank you very much for trying, but maybe it's maybe next year. And then it got down to about, I think, you know, it started off with like 60 kids or something like that, and went down to about, I don't know, 20 or something like that, where, which they were going to call rep company, and that included background extras, and, and so you didn't know what you would get, but I definitely knew that Pat was going to get Joey Jeremiah. I did not, I left like in such a huff, and I didn't look at my envelope or anything, and I remember Kit Hood come, came outside and, you know, was like, so, hey, listen, can you play instruments? And I'm like, I, I don't know, play violin, <laughs> whatever. Then he's like, well, maybe the guitar? I'm like, yeah, maybe. It's, okay, okay, I'll see you on Monday. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, all right, so I guess I'm on the show, but what? I, oh my God, I'm Joey Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, you know, they were like, you know, you can either be called Snake or Slim, and I don't know. It's, you had the choice of the Snake or yeah, Slim? Yeah, not either of which is a very good, you know. Did you ever slim? Slim? No, I mean, well, that's not, I, that was, but also, I was like, I thought I was supposed to be a badass, but it was Snake, you know? Like, not, uh, anyways, it was a very different time as far as auditioning went, you know, these guys came into the scenario with agents, a lot of them. I think we do go to School of the Arts every once in a while, even to this day. If we're, if we're looking for a type we can't find. It, it was still an unusual audition for for us, and I, I can't speak to, to you guys, but when I came in, it was just an interview with Linda Schuyler, the producer of the show, and I had been a child actor, I'd been auditioning for other things. I'd never, they just, they just sat me down and just chatted for about 20 minutes. And then after we had a monologue, it wasn't part of the show, it wasn't part of the script. So I was auditioning for Craig Manning, and there was some monologue about, you know, I don't even remember what, what he's going through. He's pissed off about something, and and that was it. And then uh, and then a few callbacks, and eventually we did actual scenes with these guys. But I think uh, they wanted to to meet us. I think that was such a huge part of it is that the producers wanted to see our own personalities and, and kind of write write for us. I 
mean, I'm trying to, like... I, like, I think Adamo, I mean... Adamo, who, who, who played is. Marco. I mean, he, he must have been one of the first, like, primetime television characters to come out on the like, show. I yeah, mean, that was really... Snake's brother was gay, but right. that's as far as they were willing to go back to the 80s. Right. As far as, like, yeah, like, I think it was too complicated in their minds, I think, to tell that story about a kid that went to the school, so Marco was the first. Yeah. But I feel like, I feel like Adamo had a great experience. Like, I never heard him say anything negative. Like, I think he was, like, one of his favorite characters. So I think, like, I... He, I he would always, he, he always says publicly that Marco helped him come out. Like, that Marco was kind of the... His kind of friend on his shoulder that really encouraged him to have the confidence to, to come out. Like, Degrassi, I think, has always had a fairly large LGBTQ relationship or audience, you know, and I, even before that, I, just because the story's about freaks, you know, it's <laughs> about not fitting in, you know, it's about like going like, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable on my own skin. And I think as we went along, it's just, you so want to do it right, you know, and it's like, Adam, which was our, you know, was transitioning on the show. We wanted to make sure we did Adam right, but we had, like, we did so much research because we we're just like, we're gonna screw this up. We're gonna piss someone off for sure. But I think it's always been like a, a scenario that we, it's just such a part of Degrassi, you know? And I feel like our fans have always been super, I, I've never heard, if anything, they want more gay characters, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Between all of you guys, it's probably different, but what was your favorite episode to act in? Out of all of the episodes you guys have played, was there one that stood out to each of you in a particular way? For me, I would say, that, like I gave you a different answer yesterday, and tomorrow I'd probably give you yeah. a different answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think now, I'm like, well, that very, very first episode where Emma meets the stalker online, and she has that scene at the end with her mom and she's crying. There was just like a lot of different elements. And for me as an actor too, like that was one of my first times being on set. And um, yeah, no, I mean, I think that the combination of like a very intense story and the excitement of it being brand new, I think that was, yeah, that was a great episode for me. I think uh, mine was, the most fun was, was our Christmas special with the love triangle. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It was really intense and, and you know, we played our characters for so long, things kind of, you know, became, you just sort of, you fall into your character, but it was, it was a really sort of uncomfortable, new, and fun, and fun time, so, so that was probably mine. Yeah, I, I, it changes, I mean, uh, right now my answer is going to be, there's a, there's an episode when, uh, Joey, Joey goes away and Craig throws a party for his friends, which is just like a party of like three people. <laughs> and, uh, and then he takes out Joey's car. And it was also, it was my first season on the show and I got to hang with Shane and yeah, Danny. Yeah. And, and um, Did you crash the car or something? Uh, Probably. I, there was some drama. No, the we got cops pulled up. The that cops stuff. pulled us yeah. up, yeah. But that was, that was just a really, a lot of the, the storylines I've done on the show were, were really intense and dramatic and um, uh, intense to film, and, and that was a, a memory that was just super fun. It was just like being at camp with friends, like it was really great. Um, I'm, I'm going to get uh, candid for a second. I, uh, so yesterday, uh, my answer was, and uh, like still in, in many ways is true, the Death and Glory episode, um, my cancer storyline, um, where, you know, uh, obviously like, lots of fights and uh, like heavy emotional uh, content, um, but something that not too many people know is um, in the early seasons of the show, I, I had like a secret crush on Lauren Collins. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I got to like in life for the character, in life, in life. life yeah. <laughs> and uh, so when when Spinner and Paige uh, started dating on the show, I was like, yes. <laughs> and then, That's like slip the writers. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Uh, so then uh, I remember uh, the season premiere of um, season four, uh, the double, part, the two-parter, uh, Ghost in the Machine, I think, was Paige's uh, rape trial. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew that her and I were going to be spending a lot of time together in that episode. And so that one I hold very close to my heart. I, 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 I honestly thought you were going to say, so that scene where I get a boner in class. <laughs> Anything you say that would be very candid, you can go in any direction.
That was with Laura. Yeah. It was then that I knew that she was <laughs> I, I, you know, it, the 80s was so long ago, I don't remember much. Um, but you know what, and you're not old enough yet, but there's gonna come a time in your life when a song reminds you of a time in your, in your childhood. And you may not remember that exact moment when you first heard that song or, or where you were, but it, it makes you smile, it makes you remember a fond emotion, uh, it represents maybe a relationship you had in your past. For me, and, and the reason why I love doing this tour so much is because every time I talk about Degrassi, I think back, it's like hearing that song again. And I remember back to my childhood and the fun times I had over a course of years. Um, and, and it's not just one moment, it's that, that, that life, that, that experience in my childhood will always be mine and it will be with these guys. And it's the best time in your life, you know, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, uh, because of those friends that you've made. Uh, and that's my answer. Um, it's funny how it's going to change from Q&A to Q&A, like, because like, now my favorite scene is, because the writers kept on talking about how they always wanted to, they didn't know how they were going to do it, but they want Mr. Simpson, they wanted Simpson to be drunk eating street meat. <laughs> and they, said they just wanted to be covered in mustard and just drunk. And I'm like, yeah, like, if you could do that, it's a miracle. And they just joke about it all the time. And then we did the episode where Simpson loses, he gets... Fired from school, and you come here, and Emma comes home, and he's drunk on the couch eating a hot dog. And I'm like, that's as close as you can get. That's as close as you, can get. you were always the straight guy. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> way in the back. Way in the back. Well, it was a little bit, uh, you know, I realized that uh, Emma had outgrown Degrassi and they were like, how do we get rid of this girl? Like, we really need the younger teenagers on this show. We got to write her out somehow. Like, honestly, I, I did wish it was Sean and Emma because they have, like, substance. Spinner and Emma. <laughs> no, it's true. They were a little frivolous. They were, you know, uh, I thought of it as a little bit of an excuse of the storyline, but we've actually, we've talked about it. No, guys, I'm just, I'm just telling you my true answer. Um, like, we've talked about no, it. No, we've had a lot of people that like Skinner and us. You know what? I think that's fantastic. Yeah. But we agree that we probably divorced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just said it. I thought you said we Well, we are... Like, what do we... <laughs> in this day and age, divorce can be, you know, financially beneficial to both parties. That's true. That's true. <laughs> just, so, just to give a little benefit to the, I'm going to say that I, when I was in the writers' room, that I, that it, the idea of Spinner and Emma came up all the time, and it was like it was the, it was, it was, it was not a frivolous thing. For years, it came no up. Way. It was always like the, I think like what's the weirdest couple on Degrassi? That's what I would say. Who would it be like? It would be like oh Emma and Spinner, and like because I, I think they were thinking like you know those uh, couples do happen where yeah. you're just like those two people shouldn't belong together. Yeah. Yeah. Whether like whether it works out or not. Yeah. But it was one of those things where like. Who's the weirdest, it always comes down to who's the weirdest couple, who's the weirdest couple. Oh, Evan and Spinner, for sure, they never would get together. And then I think it's just, it became like an ongoing thing where it's like, I kind of want to see that. Yeah. You know, whether it was, okay. uh, I mean, I'll, trust me, I get a lot of flack for it too for some reason. It's like, I don't write it. Do they just say to make us feel better though? What's that? Do they just say that to make us feel better? What, that they? That they wanted us together? Who, the fans? The writers. I don't know, I think that like, I think it was a real, like they were real, they thought this was just, Life, it felt like it felt ridiculous, you know. Like, you know, Sean wasn't around, so <laughs> Jane, was. Jane that, that, the Jane thing hurts for me. I think that, like, it hurts, I, it hurts no, for me, yeah, because I love Jane and I love Jane Spinner. Yeah. We, we were hoping that we could uh, do some sort of uh, weird love triangle thing in the Drake music video, actually, <laughs> where Emma would be there and Jane would be there, and I would have both of them. Right? Hey, we can all get along, but no, I didn't. Have <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to get that side of the room way down there. Yes, my dear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. Okay, so this question is for you, Shane. Oh. Her hair and all the seasons change so many times. <laughs> <laughs> was it on purpose or did they make you have a little bit of a um, okay, well, I'll give a quick answer here. Uh, in, in the earlier seasons, uh, they actually, they gave us as much leeway as we wanted with our hair. 
Uh, so I came in, it was Spike, then I was uh, dating a girl in the second season that was really into punk music, she wanted to dye it blonde, I asked if it was okay, they were like, yeah. Then I came in to work with the dye, they're like, no, and they changed it. Uh, then I started growing it out, but it was after it got to like season four and it was really long, they're like, okay, we're taking over. Uh, and then, then it was the faux hawk, and then the cancer storyline where I had to shave it, then it was a real mohawk, and then it kind of came back short. But when we had the Degrassi minis, I think I was pitching this idea to you that we should have one where every time you cut back to the end, you have to Because then we have to get 12 wigs if that's yeah. yeah, it would just be a normal scene, just a regular scene, but every time it comes back, like I, I had yeah. a flock of seagulls there, <laughs> Mohawk, but never, never yeah. panned out. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it, it turned out that way. It's but awesome it, though. It's yeah, like it's such a really sweeter thing every yeah. season. It's a different yeah. I know. What's it going to be like? Yeah. Yeah. Why did you change it? <laughs> yeah, I don't have as much hair. <laughs> okay, guys, I think we can only do one more question. So, uh, who would like to choose the? I had to be last time. I'm not choosing. Cassie. Okay. You miss in the fourth row. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. Third row. Third, third, third row. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone doesn't even go to real school. All right. Still, still learning to count. Yeah. Please go ahead, Miss. Are there any projects coming up? In for any of you, whether that's music or theater, or something. Uh, industry coming up? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on my third album, and also we've started, uh, I don't know if anyone watches Rick and Morty, but we've started recording the fourth season. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I actually just moved back to Toronto recently, but I've been in New York for the past seven years working on Broadway. I, played Spider-Man in Spider-Man the Musical, and uh, I um, was in a beautiful Carol King musical, and um, since then I've, can I sing? Uh, I can warm up, right now. Um, and then uh, recently I've been shooting uh, Designated Survivor with yeah. Ken Sutherland, and uh, Suits is the show I'm shooting right now. Yeah, so I would like to get onto Suits. <laughs> I've been more uh, involved in the, uh, the writing side and, and producing, so I have a, a sketch comedy series that's uh, set to come out uh, sometime within the next two months with uh, some of our uh, other ex-cast members, uh, Ray Ablack, Delmar Abizade, and, um, and Scott Patterson. Uh, it's called Oh Brother, and it, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, currently writing um, a sitcom as well, full-length sitcom. We'll see how that goes with a few of my comedian friends. And uh, I'm planning on getting back into auditioning full-time soon, so hopefully you haven't seen uh, the last of me in front of the camera. Um, I'm kind of semi-retired from acting, but I love comic conventions and events so much that I'm now uh, running a division within my talent agency, uh, booking celebrity uh, clients at shows like this. Uh, I do it internationally. Uh, and I'm also working I, on a Degrassi Junior High, Degrassi High, uh, Palooza uh, Comic Con type of event. It'll be, uh, yeah, no, it's gonna be, I'm gonna start with our generation, then maybe one day hopefully expand it to TNG and next class, but uh, hopefully next spring you'll, you'll get an announcement on Degrassi Tour on the Facebook page of a major, major mini pop-up convention, three-day event being held at Centennial College where we shot Degrassi High. Uh, that'll be the venue for the uh, Palooza. Five hours from like, the Detroit area? Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five hours around the Detroit area. That's about as far as I can go. Okay, yeah, it's going to be here in Toronto. Okay. It's going to be Okay, Toronto. we'll change this for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed. Um, so I finished uh, directing a show for Hulu uh, that's going to be out, I think, in the next month or so. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you know Holly Hobby, but it's been turned into a, uh, it's getting the, the teen treatment. She's uh, going to be a 13 year old girl. And, uh, so I uh, directed five of the 10 episodes. It's really fun. It's, it's, I, it's a little bit younger than Degrassi, but it's funny enough, we actually shot it on the Degrassi set. <laughs> so uh, uh, it, it was very 
and then, yeah, I was shooting that, and then shooting a Drake video where he smoked weed, and then, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that comes out in October, and I uh, have something in development that will hopefully have a, uh, we'll know some more about that I can't really talk about right now, yeah. but it's super fun, and I think a lot of people here would really enjoy it, but I can't really talk about it. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so thank much. You Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of Fan Expo Canada 2018. Join the conversation below with a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.